welcome to our service this week. I'm Pastor Judy Slater, the pastor of the First Presbyterian Church of Duquesne, and here with me today is Matt Demas as our organist and soloist. We do have a few announcements. Um, we have decided to continue our online worship only through the month of June. So we will continue to worship only online and see how things go um, out in the world uh, through the month of June. And a reminder that we do have a bulletin that is online under the website of the First Presbyterian Church of Duquesne, not the Facebook page, but the website under the tab of worship, where you can follow along with the call to worship, the confession, and the affirmation of faith. And if you would like to pause your video right now and look those up, feel free. Also online is information about our prayer list, information about our Bible study, and how you can um, make your donations to the church. And we also want to remind you that on YouTube, there's also a children's message for this week. So let us gather together as God's people and worship God. Let us join together for the call to worship, which comes from Revelation 5.13. Then I heard every creature in heaven and on the earth and under the earth and in the sea and all that is in them singing to the one seated on the throne and to the lamb be blessing and honor and glory and might forever and ever. We join our hearts in praising God. Let us pray. God, we lift up to you our praise and our worship. As we gather in your presence, allow us to see you, to hear you, to experience your love and grace. Amen. Well, the Bible says, if we claim to be sinless, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. Therefore, let us join together in the prayer of confession. Almighty God, you have raised Jesus from death to life and crowned him Lord of all. We confess that we have not always bowed before him or acknowledged his rule in our lives. We have gone with the ways of the world and failed to give him glory. Forgive us and raise us from sin, that we may be your faithful people, obeying the commands of our Lord Jesus Christ, who rules the world and is head of the church, his body. Amen. The Bible also says that if we confess our sins, God is faithful and just to forgive us and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Friends, believe that good news. In Jesus Christ, we are loved, we are accepted, and we are forgiven. Amen. Our Old Testament reading today comes from Psalm 68, verses 32 through 35. Psalm 68, 32 through 35. Listen for and hear the word of God. Sing to God, O kingdoms of the earth. Sing praise to the Lord, to him who rides the ancient skies above, who thunders with mighty voice. Proclaim the power of God whose majesty is over Israel, whose power is in the skies. You are awesome, O God, in your sanctuary. The God of Israel gives power and strength to his people. Our New Testament reading comes from the book of Acts, 
chapter 1, and we'll be reading verses 6 through 14. Acts 1, 6 through 14. So when they met together, they asked Jesus, Lord, are you at this time going to restore the kingdom to Israel? He said to them, it is not for you to know the times or dates the Father has set by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. After he said this, he was taken up before their very eyes, and a cloud hid him from their sight. They were looking intently up into the sky as he was going, when suddenly two men dressed in white stood beside them. Men of Galilee, they said, why do you stand here looking into the sky? This same Jesus, who has been taken from you into heaven, will come back in the same way you have seen him go into heaven. Then they returned to Jerusalem from the hill called Mount of Olives, a Sabbath day's walk from the city. When they arrived, they went upstairs to the room where they were staying. Those present were Peter, John, James and Andrew, Philip and Thomas, Bartholomew and Matthew, James, son of Alphaeus, and Simon the Zealot, and Judas, son of James. They all joined together constantly in prayer, along with the women, and Mary, the mother of Jesus, and with his brothers. The word of our Lord. Thanks be to God. I would like to share with you today the story of Gary. Gary was one of our church members, Diane's husband. Many of you remember Gary. And Gary was a miracle, a living miracle among us. In the late 1980s, he had a heart transplant. And that was very early on for heart transplants. And people in those days weren't living very long after transplants, maybe five years. Gary lived 18 years after his heart transplant. There were times when he would go into the hospital for a procedure and I would visit him there and a doctor would come in, look at his chart and say to Gary, you had a transplant? Gary would say yes. When? And Gary would tell him, and the doctor would say something like, and you're okay? And Gary says, yes, I work. I sing in my church choir. I'm one of the youth leaders. Um, I golf. I'm, I'm fine. And the doctor would leave and come back with a few other doctors who would also look at him and question him because they weren't used to seeing such a success that early on. But because it was so early in the transplant days, he received a lot of anti-rejection drugs because they weren't sure at that point. And those anti-rejection drugs caused other problems for Gary over the years. And one of them was problems with his kidneys. And he had to go on dialysis and needed a kidney transplant. And he did do well on dialysis, typical Gary. He got tired of going for dialysis, so they let him do it at home. And in fact, there are even stories about him taking his supplies to his office and doing it while he worked in the office. But he really wanted to get a transplant so that he could free up his life to do all the things that he wanted to still do. And we prayed and he hoped and waited for a transplant. 
And one day he got a call that the hospital had a kidney that was a match for him. He and Diane raced down to the hospital, called me on the way, I went down. And when the doctor explained to him, he said, now you need to know that this kidney is a good match. However, we're not sure if it's a compromised kidney. It came from someone who um, lifestyle was such that it may be compromised, but we have no way of being able to tell that now. And the transplant needs to happen now. So Gary had to make a decision and it was a tough one. He really wanted that transplant, but should he take the risk that in getting it, it may cause other issues for him? The doctor let him make the decision and left the room. And I prayed with Gary and Diane. And then I went to the waiting room down the hall so they had some time alone to talk. Diane came down and got me and she said, Gary wants you to come and pray with us again. So I went in and we prayed again. And when I was done praying, Gary said to me, I heard something while you were praying. He said, in my mind, I heard very clearly the message, go home and have dinner with your wife. He said, I think I have my answer. And so he called the doctor back in and he said to the doctor, I'm not going to take the kidney. I'm going to wait. Well, the doctor was visibly relieved because he couldn't tell Gary not to do this, but he didn't think it was a good idea either. And that was all the more affirmation for Gary that he had made the right decision. So Gary went home not knowing whether he would ever get another chance for a kidney transplant. Sure enough, however, a couple months later, another call came of another match and Gary did get his kidney transplant. The sermon title today is The Courage to Wait. Gary had the courage to wait, to wait until he had the assurance from God that this was okay to continue. Well, in our scripture passage today, the disciples are witnessing Jesus' ascension into heaven. After Jesus' resurrection, he spent 40 days among the disciples, meeting with them, appearing to them. But now it was time for him to ascend into heaven and take his place on the right hand of God, which isn't just a place, but it is a place of power and authority. Jesus was with the disciples, teaching them, but now it was time for him to ascend to a place of authority over all creation. And so he says to the disciples, I want you to wait for the power of the Holy Spirit to come upon you. But when it does, you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in Judea, Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. They had their instructions, however, initially were to wait. And so they did. You know, they could have taken it upon themselves at that point to say, we've been with Jesus now long enough. We know what he says and what he does. Let's just go out and do it. But they didn't, they waited. And when you think about it, Jesus could have just given them the power of the Holy Spirit right there, breathed on them, and they would have had it. But he didn't. He told them to wait. And they had this period of waiting. But during this period of waiting, it wasn't a time of doing nothing. They had, during this time of waiting, they gathered as a community of faith with each other, with the other faithful. And scripture says they prayed together constantly. 
and they watched and they waited for the Holy Spirit. They waited for God to work among them. This is a very important time for them. Because if Jesus would have breathed the Holy Spirit on them and said, go and do what I've commanded you, they would have missed a really crucial lesson here. By waiting, Jesus was teaching them the discipline of seeking and watching for God so that God could lead them where God wanted them to go. He was teaching them how to watch and wait for God in their lives. So the question is, do you expect God to work? Praying, having a community of faith, watching and expecting God to act can open us up to experiencing the presence of God in our lives and in our world. Do you expect God to work? Are you looking and waiting for God to make God's presence known? Many years ago, I was told that whenever you go to a worship service or a Bible study or read scripture, ask God to give you a message through that time. Watch and wait and expect God to act in your life. Well, when our children were little and we were on vacation, one Sunday we went to church. We had to explain to our children that, yeah, we still went to church on vacation because as a minister, this was my vacation. I could sit and listen and worship. So I remembered this lesson, and as we were going to worship, I prayed, God, give me a message today from this worship. And I watched and waited to see what God may say to me, whether it was through the sermon, the scripture reading, the songs. Well, that Sunday, there happened to be a substitute uh, pastor. The regular pastor was on vacation, and it was an older retired minister. And the sermon, let's just say, was pretty dry. And so we came out of the service that day, and my husband and kids said, that was the worst sermon we've ever heard. And I said, really? I was blown away. The delivery left something to be desired, but whatever that man said that day, it was like God was speaking directly to my life. Because I had asked, and I had expected God to give me a message, I was more open to hearing what God had to say to me that day. Are you expecting God to work? Are you waiting and watching to see what God is going to do in your life and in the world? You know, we are in a time of waiting, aren't we? And during this time of waiting, waiting for the coronavirus to uh, be done, in this time of waiting, we too can stay connected to our community of faith in a different way than we're used to, but we can stay connected to each other and we can pray and we can watch and wait to see what God is going to do we can watch and expect that God will make us aware of God's presence in some way. What seemed like the end of Jesus' ministry in his ascension was just the beginning. It was just the beginning of ushering in the kingdom of God among us, where we can experience now God's presence and God's glory so that someday when it comes in fullness, we will recognize it and we will be ready. Jesus' ministry here on earth was just beginning and the disciples, which were now called apostles, disciples are students of someone, 
But from here on in, in the Bible, the disciples are now called apostles because they are sent ones. Apostles may, apostle means sent one. The apostles, through the Holy Spirit, God would use them, use the church, and continue to use us for God's glory and God's kingdom work if we would just be open and we would just look for and receive God's presence. Well, we are now in phase yellow and people are anxious to get back to their life, anxious to get back to doing the things that they want to do and more anxious to get back to worship gathering together for worship and our other activities but we have decided to wait to wait on god's assurance that it's safe in our bible study on wednesday evening we thought about noah noah was on the ark for over a year waiting for it to be safe to come out and even after he saw dry land he waited a few more months until he was certain sending out a raven sending out a dove who came back another dove that brought an olive leaf until finally the dove did not come back and that was his assurance that it was safe we want the assurance that it is safe before we gather again for worship. Let us wait for the Lord. Let us wait for God to assure us of God's safety. And in the meantime, let us stay together, let us pray, and let us watch and wait for God to work in us and among us. Let us pray. Holy God, we do ask for your help in being open to your presence, to your spirit. Give us the wisdom to wait on you. Give us the faith that we have assurance that you are there and that you do continue to work in us and among us. So we lift up to you our church, we lift up to you our lives, we lift up to you our world asking that you will show us what to do and that you will give us your presence among us. Amen.
Let us join together in the affirmation of faith, a statement of what we believe. We believe in God who cares enough about creation to enter it. In Jesus Christ who came among us, remains with us, and is still coming. In the Spirit of God who speaks through flesh to human flesh. We believe in God's judgment and mercy, God's comfort and challenge, and in God's power to be incarnate in our lives. Let us pray. Jesus, Lord of all, we join our hearts as your followers, as your church, and we come to you in prayer believing that you hear us and are at work in us and around us. We have faith in your love and presence with us. And as we go through our lives and as we go through this pandemic, we pray for people who are sick, who are grieving, who are suffering, those who are vulnerable, our medical professionals, caregivers and researchers, we pray for our decision makers. We pray for our children and parents and teachers. We pray for those who are alone. We pray for those working in this at-risk time and for those who aren't working. And on this Memorial Day weekend, we give you thanks for all who died to give us the freedoms we have in our country. We thank you for all who served, and we thank you and pray for your protection for all who are currently serving, especially during this pandemic time. We continue to pray for our country and for the world. Hear our prayers for those on our prayer lists and for ourselves. As we pray the prayer you taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen.
safe and have the courage to wait on God. God will guide us and direct us and get us through this time. Receive this blessing. May the love of God, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the friendship and power of the Holy Spirit be with us all, today and always. Amen. Thank you.